I'm Kathy Perkins, director of the FET Interactive Simulations Project at the University of Colorado Boulder. So the FET project's main mission is really to advance science education and literacy worldwide. And we do that through the creation of new innovative tools for teaching and learning science and then looking at how those tool, tools can be integrated into the classroom and really change that classroom environment, change the way students are actively engaging with the science content, giving them a way to um, discover underlying science concepts and giving the teacher more tools to facilitate that discovery and really help students ask um, good questions and, and investigate and discover the concepts for themselves. The FET project is really has kind of two sides to it. It has one side is this um, product development side where we're creating the, and designing the interactive simulations. And then the other side is really this research side where we're engaging in um, understanding what makes a really effective simulation and then also engaging in looking at how that simulation can be integrated into the classroom and how it can reshape the learning and the roles that the students and um, teachers are, are playing in that classroom environment. FED has a collection of over 128 interactive simulations for teaching and learning science. And they are all open um, and available through our website, as well as being open to the world. So they have been translated into over 70 languages and are used across the world. One thing that's really unique about interactive simulations is that they can actually bridge a really um, broad range of grade levels. So we have one simulation called the Circuit Construction Kit that is used both at the fourth grade level and at the college level. It was designed for the college level. Um, it was designed to teach parallel and series circuits. It was designed to um, teach what happens when you change the resistance of light bulbs or you add resistance to wires. You can build any circuit you want. But one thing that we do with interactive simulations is we make them highly intuitive so that they can be used by a really broad range of users. So at the lower levels, these um, grade school students, they can actually start interacting with the simulation. And they pull out light bulbs and batteries and wires. And a teacher in that grade might just say, make the light bulb light. And so through their interactions with the simulation, they discover, oh, to make the light bulb light, I need a battery, I need wires, and I need to be, them to be connected around in a circle. And when I achieve that, I see these blue dots moving around. Maybe they don't know, they don't quite associate those blue dots with electrons moving through the, the circuit, but they've learned a whole lot about circuits. They, they have a really good base, and they've done it themselves. Um, through kind of facilitation in the classroom environment. Right now, um, FET simulations are used over 40 million times per year, and the growth rate has been about 50% a year for the last several years. One motivation for creating these new tools like interactive simulations is attracting a broader diversity of um, individuals into STEM careers and STEM learning and, and actually into to science literacy, to becoming science literate. And so um, I think that interactive simulations have uh, a lot of potential to attract more women into science as well as um, serve underrepresented populations in our country and, and, and provide them with the tools that can really help them um, engage in science and, and be motivated to learn science.